Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It's Friday, March the 15th, 2019. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now what I've done in this video, because I want us to follow along together, right? What I've done is I've posted a very important fight. It's Errol Spence's win over Lamont Peterson. Now, as I like to say, knockouts cause amnesia. But this is a fight where an opponent decides he's going to walk down Errol Spence. Right? It's very important. I know the public thinks that's the most absurd strategy to take. In the comments section of that video, and again, it's Errol Spence versus Lamont Peterson, the highlights, I have the video in my favorites folder. In the comment section of that video, a viewer actually writes, I don't understand Lamont Peterson's strategy. No one can walk down Errol Spence. And believe it or not, something like 87 people gave that comment a thumbs up. Now, my theory on the Mikey Garcia fight is that Mikey Garcia is going to walk down Errol Spence. That Garcia is going to get Spence on his back foot and then everything is going to fall apart for Errol Spence. I personally will be surprised if Errol Spence is able to go the distance. As I said in an earlier video, people like Robert Easter are defensively blessed. Taller fighter than Mikey, went the distance with Mikey, right? But Easter is a guy who is prepared for what happens if he gets hurt. He knows how to cover up. Right? Easter doesn't see himself as Alpha, as Goliath, right? as Wilt Chamberlain, as Michael Jordan. Errol Spence does. So let's talk about this Lamont Peterson fight. Let's also be clear on who Lamont Peterson is. This is a guy who fought and beat Amir Khan. He fought Danny Garcia, and quite frankly, he was the better fighter the second half of the fight. This is a vet who's been in car crashes, the Lucas Matisse fight, but who has also had great moments in the ring against world-class fighters. He himself is a two-weight former champion. So he looked at the film on Errol Spence. Think about it, right? Peterson, consummate professional. He looked at the film of Errol Spence, and unlike the public, he saw that he could collapse the pocket on Errol Spence. And he's not the only one. Kel Brook saw it too. So, Peterson's strategy, and it's in the video, it'll tell you a lot about Spence. His strategy is to walk down Errol Spence. That's clear from the opening bell. Veteran fighter. Veteran fighter. Doesn't try to run from Spence. Comes in, has his hands up, is trying to walk Spence down. Right? Now, Spence's reaction's interesting. A lot of guys seeing this guy try to just collapse the pocket would move, would move laterally, would try to pop a jab. Isn't a jab a space maker? Right? Some guys might even say, great, I know where Lamont Peterson's going to be. He's walking forward. Let me just back up on my back foot, get up on my toes, pop a jab, throw some combinations, win these rounds on the judges' scorecards. I don't have to beat up a guy to win the round on the scorecards. I'm helping my own cause. If I'm winning rounds on the scorecards, 
bagging the rounds while, you know, moving away from the pocket, conceding the pocket to this guy who wants to crash the pocket, but creating enough distance between us where this guy can't get clever and hit me with counters. That's not Errol Spence, folks. That's not Errol Spence. So Spence, at times, sets up shop. Right? Peterson has his hands up. Spence is trying to get his head underneath Peterson's chin. In other words, Spence's preference is to be deep in the pocket. Right? Deep in the pocket. You're going to notice, too, that Peterson, a pro, keeps the fight in the middle of the ring. He understands that against this Goliath guy, he doesn't want to have his back up against the ropes. Right? So Spence knows there's a defined pocket. Spence is trying to get inside on Peterson. Spence's effective punches are hooks. They're predominantly hooks. Spence is just trying to get around Peterson's guard. So he's throwing hooks from the outside. Now Spence is a hellacious puncher. Peterson, rather than move away, avoid the punches, Peterson himself wants to stay in the pocket. He's convinced Spence is going to crack. So Peterson has to deal with Spence's power. He has to deal with Spence's hooks. Understand, Spence's hooks are wide. You see the frame of this video. Spence is throwing hooks out here. Right? There's a space between the hooks. We'll call this splitting the uprights. Where a guy who can dip a shoulder and throw a straight right hand could hurt Spence. Then the question would be, what survival skills does Spence have? Right? Sometimes one of the best things to happen to a young fighter is to get hurt in the ring and to have to survive. Right? Early enough in your career where you can say, okay, how do I handle this situation? So when I'm in against a world class championship level fighter, if it happens to me, I will have had experience in this situation and I'll know how to react. To the Spence crowd, tell me the fight where Spence gets badly hurt and has to protect himself defensively. So that takes us to the Mikey Garcia fight. By the way, how does this fight end? Spence starts landing big hooks. Peterson, realizing that he's behind on the scorecards because Spence is beating him on volume. You'll notice too, Spence likes to throw punches even when his opponent isn't throwing punches. Spence's offense is a big part of his defense. That also opens the door to the idea that an opponent might try to get Spence to punch himself out. So Lamont Peterson, I believe it's around the seventh round, decides he's not going to come back out. He ends the fight on a stool. He's beaten. You look at his face, you see he's been hit with some shots. Spence is a gifted puncher. Right? That's how that fight ends. Let's talk about the Mikey Garcia fight. Let's talk about some things to look for in this fight. Now understand, Garcia is a better technician than Errol Spence. Right? Understand too, and this is important, right? Because it's a mental thing. It's how you're wired. In an earlier video, I, I referenced two guys from a different sport. Barry Bonds and Alex Rodriguez. Fastball hitters. Right now, a viewer said, hey, I'm Portuguese. 
Dwyer, please stay away from the baseball analogies. Okay, I get it, right? By talking about fastball hitters, what I'm talking about are the kind of guys who, when an opponent tries to collapse the pocket on them, when an opponent runs in on them, right? The guy doesn't flee, doesn't panic, right? The guy, uh, the guy actually has the presence of mind to view it as an opportunity, right? So in a baseball game, you'll notice some guys come up and the pitcher is throwing smoke, right? Throwing very fast pitches. And batters are intimidated, right? John Crook against Randy Johnson. Famous moment in baseball, right? The, the pitcher, the fastball pitchers will even exploit that. They'll throw the ball over the batter's head just to let the batter think about the fact that if they threw it at the guy's head, the batter doesn't have the reflexes to get out of the way. But then you have guys like Bonds and A-Rod, right? These guys would stay in the batter's box. Barry Bonds would be leaning over the strike zone. You try to throw a fastball inside on him, he was ready for it, right? These, these are the guys who want you to throw the fastball. So I encourage people to look at a fight I was wrong on. Orlando Salido against a fastball hitter named Mikey Garcia. Salido is diving in. He's diving in repeatedly on Mikey Garcia. And Mikey Garcia, like Bonds, like A-Rod, views it as an opportunity is hitting Salido, who beat Vasyl Lomachenko, with counters. He drops Salido. Right? Fastball hitters see the world in slow motion. Guy charges in on them. They're thinking, here's where I can hit. Here's how I can do this. Right? Comparing it to a different sport, again, another American sport, there's certain quarterbacks, Brady, Roethlisberger, who want you to blitz them. Because when you blitz them, while some quarterbacks see the linebacker coming in about to hit them, these guys are looking at the open receiver. These guys are looking at who this linebacker who's blitzing was supposed to stick if he wasn't rushing the quarterback. And they'll stay in the pocket and they'll throw the football. The blitz is actually an opportunity for them. So much so that a lot of NFL teams don't even blitz Tom Brady. Because what's the point? The guy is going to look downfield, see the open receiver, right? By the way, that's who Brady calls his favorite receiver the open receiver he's gonna see the open receiver and for him the blitz is an opportunity so things to look for with Mikey Garcia Errol Spence the first and I believe this is important is whether or not Spence is able to set up a pocket in the Lamont Peterson fight Peterson comes forward Right? He's telling Spence, I'm going to collapse the pocket. Right? I'm not going to hide here. I'm just going to walk forward. You're going to know where I am. Right? Mikey Garcia, and it's called lateral movement and spacing. And a jab. Mikey Garcia might not allow the establishment of a pocket. Think Prime Manny Pacquiao, where Pacquiao is bouncing around the ring, right? Part of the problem is you don't know where Manny Pacquiao is. You don't have a guy standing in front of you saying, okay, here I am, let's fight. You have a guy moving. 
So then if you're front foot heavy like Errol Spence and you want a pocket, you want to be able to put your chin, your head under the other guy's chin, you can't find the guy. Now watch Mikey Garcia. Garcia has a better jab than Errol Spence. I'm reading all these comments on the fighter. People are saying Spence has a pretty good jab. All right, this is a two-man event. Mikey Garcia has the better jab than Errol Spence. Right? Let's just let's just stop kidding ourselves. That jab is going to allow him to bounce Spence off of any pocket Spence tries to set up. Right? Let me also say this too. You see it in the Lamont Peterson fight. Spence isn't trying to throw power shots straight right down Main Street. Because in my opinion, he can't. Right? He's a hooker. Phrase that's gotten me in trouble here on YouTube in the past. Right? He's a hooker. See, he wants to dip a shoulder and throw a punch at an angle. Right? He wants to get leverage. He wants to lean into a shot. And he wants to throw a hook. By contrast, Mikey Garcia, who can throw great hooks. Garcia's left hook is one of the great punches in this fight. Garcia, who can throw hooks, spectacular hooker, can also throw straight punches. Right? He doesn't have to hook you to drop you. So understand, if Garcia comes in, won't allow the setup of a pocket until he's ready. If Garcia's episodic, controls distance, when Spence tries to bridge the distance, Garcia is able to hit him with the jab. Remind him I have the jab. Then tell me what happens next. Right? So, so the big question here is, is a pocket even going to be set up early? Because Garcia is a guy who can move, right? Garcia, Garcia can actually pivot on people. Right? I don't believe a pocket's going to be set up right away. I also believe, like Lamont Peterson, and keep in mind, that fight makes it to about the seventh round. And Peterson's doing hardly any offense. Like Lamont Peterson, I expect Mikey to keep this fight in the middle of the ring. In other words, Spence isn't going to be able to have him up on the ropes and have his way with them. Right? So look for that. Look for Mikey's jab. Then what I want people to do is to consider something people just don't think is possible right now. If Spence decides he's going to try to walk through Garcia's jab, which I consider to be a mind-blowingly bad decision, Right? As he comes forward, is Garcia going to view that as an opportunity? Is this going to be like Barry Bonds hitting a fastball? Because Spence is not defensively blessed. Cal Brook came inside on Spence, landed several punches. Spence didn't have a hand up. It wasn't like Spence was like this and Kell Brook had to squeeze punches through. No, Spence was naked. Kell Brook, to me, wins the early rounds. Right? The problem was, then Spence continues to go hunting on Brook. Brook's stamina dips. Then Brook finds himself pinned up against the ropes. Right? What happens if Spence goes hunting on Mikey Garcia, gets hit with crisp counters from a guy who has superior hand speed and straighter punches? That's important because if these guys throw punches at the same time, I'm just telling you Mikey Garcia gets there first. 
Also, some pundits have said Mikey's going to have to show Errol Spence that he can punch. Right, folks? Mikey Garcia is one of the premier punchers in the sport. Right? Uh, <laughs> Mikey Garcia is going to come in the fight above the welterweight limit. Right? It's 147. Mikey himself, in interview, says, yeah, I'm going to come in at 150. Right? Isn't weight a little bit of an illusion? Mikey's 5'6". Mikey's going to be a stout 150. Right? A stout 150. And he's always been a puncher. Folks, he fought Robert Easter. Robert Easter got hit with such shots that Easter, who I believe was unbeaten at the time, started turtling. Started backing away from the shorter man. Right? You remember Mikey Garcia against Adrian Broner at 140. Now, Broner was a champ at 147, wasn't he? Broner moves out of the pocket quickly. Right? So, if this fight comes down to whether or not Mikey has enough punching power to stand up Errol Spence, I'll take my chances. Let's also talk about another dynamic that needs to be mentioned here. I have a real strong preference. A real strong preference for fighters who stay in shape. I've looked at yo-yo guys. Guys like Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Right? Guys who had to lose 15 pounds to make weight. These guys who rehydrate after a weigh-in to big weights. Right? And all I can say is I know fighters like that are not remotely close to being in the kind of shape that someone like a Floyd Mayweather was in. Right? Think about Floyd and Manny for a second. Right? Mayweather always in shape. Both Manny and Floyd, both of them, sometimes would show up at a weigh-in and would be one to two to three pounds under the weight class. Understand when Floyd fought Oscar De La Hoya, a champ at a higher weight class, 154. Floyd came in at something like 150, 151. Right? Because Floyd's, Floyd's in shape. His weight isn't a gimmick. It's not a fake weight. He doesn't have to hit saunas to make weight. He doesn't have to go to a liquid diet to make weight. Now here are the fights at 147. They have a second weigh-in, believe it or not. Spence, the next day, can't weigh more than 157. Right? 157. Pundits believe Spence is going to come in weighing over 160, right? Because that second weigh-in isn't as they walk into the ring. That second weigh-in is hours before the actual fight. Now, I'll just tell you one man's opinion, right? One man's opinion. I've just found that guys who are squeezing themselves into much lighter weights aren't as fit just aren't as guys who are naturally around that weight right Mikey's gonna come in at 150 right I don't believe Spence is gonna have the level of fitness of Mikey Garcia I also think psychologically over time it plays games with the guy Because I think the guy understands that his advantage comes from size. As opposed to a Manny or a Floyd who feel that they have the skills to beat the other fighter. 
right? They're, they're not in a rush to try to physically impose themselves on their opponents. There's no panic if they don't physically impose themselves on their opponent. What happens here if Goliath can't physically impose himself on Mikey Garcia, who's excellent at pivoting after punches, who has the superior defense, who, no doubt, no doubt whatsoever, knows that Spence's primary punches are hooks, not straight punches. In other words, if Mikey Garcia were fighting Vladimir Klitschko, guy with a great straight overhand right, Deontay Wilder, guy with ring coverage and a great straight overhand right. Mikey would be there and he wouldn't know if the punch is coming from outside or if the punch is coming straight. So defensively, he'd have to do some guessing, wouldn't he? Right? I think one of the secrets to Golovkin is as he starts to throw, because his punches are unorthodox, guys can't tell what he's aiming for right you're like wow is this a hook that I need to block from the outside or is this a punch headed for my chin that I need to block here I don't believe you have that level of mystery when you're fighting Errol Spence so Ronnie Shields Paulie Malignaggi are quoted as saying that they don't know what Mikey sees on film that leads him to believe that he can beat Errol Spence. Right? I'm sure both guys realize this is boxing. Nothing's a certainty. Underdogs do win fights. Let me just offer a slightly different opinion. Maybe Mikey saw the same thing that Kell Brook and Lamont Peterson saw. Because both of them want to walk down or try to walk down Errol Spence. Both of them. Maybe they see a guy who you know the punches are coming from the outside. He has a jab, but doesn't have a lot of confidence in it. Can't live on that jab. You know the main punches are going to come from the outside. You know he sees himself as a Goliath type guy. He wants to destroy you over by the ropes. With short to mid-range hooks. He's a power puncher. He's going for knockouts. You know that. But if you're able to keep the fight in the middle of the ring, if you're able to keep him guessing on pocket creation, if you're able to walk a front foot heavy fighter into your own jabs, and then if you're able to throw straight punches between his hooks, Understand, if they throw at the same time, I think Mikey Garcia's punch gets there first. Then when a pocket forms, because it'll form eventually, if you can be active in the pocket, like Cal Brook was, which Lamont Peterson was not able to do, Right? If you're able to be active in the pocket, keep in mind, Lamont Peterson is almost parallel to Errol Spence, and he's coming in like this. What happens if Mikey instead comes in at a side profile? Right? In other words, here the pocket's defined. I come in at a side profile, I'm popping a jab, and I'm moving a little bit off at the side. I'm shorter than Errol Spence. I can fight out of a crouch. Can Spence find me with his hooks? This is a fascinating fight. It's one of the best fights that could have been made in boxing. It is a legacy making fight. Right? Just be prepared to have your mind blown. I think the underdog is going to show you why he's a future Hall of Famer. I think he's going to get Errol Spence on his back foot. Then he's going to take him apart. Then you're going to see Errol Spence trying to reach and hold on a shorter fighter. I'm just telling you that sometimes being shorter is better 
in boxing. Being shorter shouldn't be presumed to be a disadvantage. Right? Just think of fighters like Mike Tyson, for crying out loud. Rocky Marciano, for crying out loud. Right? Garcia here could well get the stoppage. I'm expecting Garcia to leave, no doubt, in terms of how he deals with the pocket. Right? Because he knows Errol Spence is going to come hunting for him. The problem with some hunters is that they're predictable. If you know Errol Spence wants to hit you with short to mid-range hooks, doesn't have a lot of straight punches in his arsenal, doesn't really have a back foot game. Those punches from the outside, not really straight. An elite fighter can try to exploit that. Mikey Garcia is an elite fighter. I'm shocked. Shocked. That he's something like a 3-1 to one underdog. I understand the late money is coming in on Mikey Garcia. I'm not surprised. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I especially want to hear from the Errol Spence crowd. Right? Understand, as Mikey has said in interviews, he's very comfortable in Texas. He's won two titles in Texas. Richard Schaefer is going around saying that more than 30,000 tickets have already been sold for the fight. Folks, it's not even the day of the fight. I made a video here online. I thought, okay, you know, for the Boxing Hardcore, this is a special fight. Maybe I'll get 2,000 views. That video is already at 5,000 views. And we're not even at the day of the fight. So people have figured out that this fight might be a huge moment for boxing. Two unbeatens. Who's fooling who? I think Errol Spence is about to find out that he's missing a back foot game and that he can be countered. Countered. Even as he comes in collapsing the pocket by a straighter punching, quicker Mikey Garcia. That's how I see it. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.